Welcome to NCCP Anywhere. I'm Pastor Melissa Rudolph, and I'm glad you've joined us for this installment of Remix as we talk about God's deliverance as seen in the Psalms. But before we begin today, I hope that you will join with me as we pray. Holy and gracious God, open our ears and our minds and our hearts to the word you have for each and every one of us this day. As I, your servant, stand before you, I pray that I would decrease, that you would increase. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. The Psalms have been inspirational for all sorts of art forms that have come ever since their creation. And as we examine today's Psalm, Psalm 40, we find in it a very familiar tune. And it might be one that you remember from listening to music over the years. Pastor Jerry told the story of how we find this Psalm in the band U2. If you go to Spotify, you can actually search and find there is a playlist called Psalms, times that Bono, the lead singer, talks to God. And Pastor Jerry shared the story about how in 1985, U2 was having their Unforgettable Fire tour. And as they were performing, at the end of their set, they came back onto the stage and they did an encore. And the encore that they chose was their song, 40, which is essentially the words of Psalm 40 set to new music. At the end of the concert, the crowd that had gathered started spilling out into the streets and they sang with it the chorus, I will sing, sing a new song. And it, that's the proclamation that reverberated as people were coming out into the streets. What is it? that they wanted to sing this new song about. Well, it was a new song about a God who would bring people their salvation, a God who would bring deliverance to those who were patient enough to wait for it. That was an important concept for the Hebrews all throughout their lives. They were continuously waiting on God to act. And King David was no different when he was experiencing times in his life when he too had to wait on God to be a deliverer. So as we dive into our reading today, I start out with the very first verse. And in the Common English Bible, it tells us, I put all my hope in the Lord. He leaned down to me. He listened to my cry for help. Some translations speak to this differently. They say the words that we waited on God for deliverance. And when we go back to the original Hebrew, it has a really interesting way to consider this. This, in the waiting, I waited. What a concept. When we're waiting on God, that, we're, that we just simply allow ourselves to do that, to wait. How many times have you tried to jump ahead and come up with your own plan of action and figure out what needed to take place? But no, in the Hebrew, uh, in the waiting, I waited. When we go on to this verse, it talks about how God's the one who listened and leaned down to help. God is the one who initiates this action. It's this moment of grace where we see God at work in everything that needs to take place. He lifted me out of the pit of death, out of the mud and filth, and set my feet on solid rock. He steadied my legs. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise for our God. Many people will learn of this and be amazed. They will trust the Lord. Those who put their trust in the Lord, who pay no attention to the proud or to those who follow lies are truly happy. Hear that in the middle of that psalm, we get a little bit of a beatitude that we're happy when we can wait and recognize that God is going to be the one who is our deliverer. The psalmist goes on to say, you Lord, my God, You've done so many things, your wonderful deeds and your plans for us. No one can compare with you. 
If I were to proclaim and talk about all of them, they would be too numerous to count. You don't relish sacrifices or offerings. You don't require entirely burned offerings or compensation offerings, but you have given me ears. So I said, here I come. I'm inscribed in the written scroll. I want to do your will, my God. Your instruction is deep within me. I've told the good news of your righteousness in the great assembly. I didn't hold anything back, as you well know, Lord. I didn't keep your righteousness only to myself. I declare your faithfulness and your salvation. I didn't hide your loyal love and trustworthiness from the great assembly. These verses point to a few truths that we need to keep in mind when we are waiting for God to show up and to act on our behalf. The first is, if you look closely in, the, in your Bible, you'll find that at the end of each of these lines is an exclamation point. What do we remember about exclamation points? They're big and they're bold. They're emphatic. So when we're coming and we're speaking to God about what it is we need God to do and recalling all the ways that God has acted, it's not necessarily a quiet action. It's one that we need to be bold in proclaiming. And when we look through these lines, what we also discover is that the psalmist is remembering all the times that God came through. In the waiting I waited, well, what do we do when we're struggling with that waiting? We think about the times that God acted in history, in our lives, those times when God brought the people out. It's also noted that we find these verses again in the book of Hebrews. And I always tell people the book of Hebrews is a letter to the church that's essentially the cliff notes of the whole Bible. So when it's pointing people to what they need to know about God and its simplicity, it's the recognition that waiting on God is an action where we can look at the entire sweep of human history and recognize that when God's been faithful to redeem all of his people all along the way, that we're in line for that too. When we're waiting on God, that is a time to recall whenever it has been that God was in your midst, when something worked out that you couldn't imagine, when you were adrift and suddenly there was the answer right before you when you're meandering and there right in front of you is what you need to do for the very next step. Those are moments where we've experienced God delivering us, bringing us up out of that muck and mire as the psalmist was talking about. So now you, Lord, he goes on to say, don't hold back any of your compassion from me. Let your loyal love and faithfulness always protect me because countless evils surround me. My wrongdoings have caught up with me. I can't see a thing. There's more of them than hairs on my head. My courage leaves me. Favor me, Lord, and deliver me. Lord, come quickly and help me. Let those who seek my life, who want me dead, be disgraced and put to shame. Remember, David wrote a lot of these Psalms when he was on the run from King Saul's people. And this is an experience where David is also looking back and remembering the times that God has delivered him. Let those who want to do me harm be thoroughly frustrated and humiliated. Let those who say to me, yes, oh yes, be destroyed by their shame. This is a prayer that not only is God going to deliver us from what we're facing, but that we're allowing God's justice to take its part, that we don't have to be the ones who battle against our enemies, but that if we wait patiently and put it in God's hands, then God can be the one who brings about justice. But let all who seek you celebrate and rejoice in you. Let those who love your salvation always say, the Lord is great, but me, I am weak and needy. Let my Lord think of me. You are my help and my rescuer. My God, don't wait any longer. We hear those words 
about waiting, starting this psalm and ending this psalm. It's a, a moment when we see that the psalmist is finding patience in recounting all of God's deeds. If you look at the psalm that comes immediately before it, Psalm 39, there's much more of a frenetic cry out for God to act. It's a begging and pleading that God is going to be the one who is in control. But Psalm 40 shows more patience. It shows the acceptance and recognition that God is going to be the one who acts. And so we see that progression as we read through the Psalms at different times. And this is one that's important to come back to. I wanna also note that in Psalm 40, we have been talking all throughout this month about remixes and how we hear, we hear the same language and the same refrains coming through in, in the music that David wrote. We find, if you turn with me in your Bible to Psalm 70, another version of this. And so I'm gonna ask you, which one do you think is the remix? Is Psalm 40 the original and Psalm 70 the one that harkens back to it? Or is, was Psalm 70 written first and Psalm 40 pulls it back in? So try to figure out which one is the remix. Hurry God to deliver me, it says. Hurry Lord to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and humiliated. Let them fall backward and be disgraced. Those people who delight in my downfall. Let those who say, aha, aha, stop because of their shameful behavior. But let those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. And let those who love your saving help say again and again, God is great. But me, I'm poor and needy. Hurry to me, God. You are my helper and my deliverer. Oh Lord, don't delay. It's the same thing. We hear those same words. And that reinforces to us just how much we can keep coming back to God, crying out and asking for God's deliverance, that God can hear those refrains again and again. And even though we're waiting patiently, we have a God who will hear us, who has ears to receive what we bring before him. John Milton, the great poet, had a poem called On His Blindness. And there's, also, there's a line in that poem that says, there also serve who only stand and wait. We are serving God when we are waiting on him to act. We as God's people have to discern when it's time for us to be put into motion to, to make the next move or when we need to simply be to recall when God has been the one who came through, when God was the one who initiated and pushed the next move forward. And when we can do that, when we can wait patiently on the Lord, that's when we experience the power of God being the one who delivers us. So I pray for all of us that we can find the patience to wait as we cry out to God for deliverance, that we can sit and recall all of the mighty times that God has acted. And then when we are recalling that, that we proclaim it, that we can trust in the God who has acted, is acting, and will act forevermore. And as we pour into the streets, let us sing, sing a new song, just as all those people that night at the concert. We will sing, sing a new song. Amen.